Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about reading source code fast. So let's get into it. So the question in question was literally that. Hi Frederick, how would you read source code of a large project fast? Well, uh, usually it, yeah, you can't really, it depends on the size of the project, like if it's a really, really large project, like you can read as much as you want, that's not going to help you much. So I, you have a, I have a trick that I use, uh, which is the way that I usually do the, uh, like how I go about learning a large project or how to figure it out, how I figure it out basically. Uh, I've used uh, this term as I call what I call the code inventory for you guys a few times I think in a few videos where the basic description of what I, that is is just literally okay I need to figure out what all what where are all the things in my system so I understand the domain that I'm dealing with and that means in essence trying to understand the whole thing not at a granular, a granular level at a very high level and figure out where are my dependencies, what are my domain entities, uh, what are my dependence, uh, like the packages that I might be using or third-party systems that I need access to, things like that, all of this sort of stuff, right? Once I, that is done, I should have a fairly high level understanding of the sort of resources my system works with, because usually, uh, that's what we call domain entities, those domain entities are either things that I put in a database, or it's something that's coming from a third-party API. These are the nouns and the verbs, like the actions and the entities that we try to use to describe with common language what's happening in the system. It can be a product, a, an order, a user, you know, and uh, placing an order, like these sorts of terminologies, right? Now, once I have established where, like, what all those sorts of entities are and the rough set of features that a system has, that means now that I sort of get uh, an idea of all the areas of what this product is all about and then I go and take a look at uh, I really do like starting at the uh, controller level or like at the network level because um, something that you may if you've done basic programming courses the thing that you might have heard is that we talk about the entry point to your program because every single software every single piece of software every program has an entry point and the entry point is just the start of where the program starts running it can in every programming language has something similar to it if you run your if you have an interpreter or a compiler, it doesn't matter what it is, right? You have something that runs. It can be a runtime as well if you're doing bare metal stuff. Something that executes the program. It has to have a starting point. For a web application, the start point is always practically the network, the URL, the controller that is hooked to. If you go to that URL, a function is going to run. And a web server can take in multiple requests, but it's still the same thing. It's the same thing as if you if you write a hello world application with just one function, and that's the entry point. It's the same principle. It's just that you have many entry points. Now, what happens when you make that realization is that now you can start thinking about, at least what I that's what I usually do. You can start thinking about the entire like this big product that you're dealing with as just a set of modules. It's a tree, basically. Every enter, every network, uh, every URL is just a tree structure, which means that if you know where the URL is, then you can start tracing all the calls from that point downwards, and you can do that for each entry point or for each URL. And so, what I usually do when this starts happening is that I start taking a look, and this is um, I do this very often, uh, basically in every project, because uh, over time things becomes a little bit. Mm, people move things around and think different things make sense to different people but what I like to do is to try to segment the different areas so an example would be if I'm dealing with an application that has a, diff a lot of different services or a lot of different functions and classes or if it's a front-end product like a bunch of UI components I start looking at the top layer and I say all right here are the here here is this class or this entity and it's direct descendants or whatever it depends on these are these things are they segmented in the same module? And then I try to create buckets for functionality 
uh, for the things that I'm dealing with. Some stuff is shared, like I'll look at the class that a classic one is the email service or like an email functionality. That's a, that's a dependency that basically everything I, uh, everyone is using to some degree because it's a cross-cutting piece of functionality. But say that I'm dealing with a user entity or if I'm dealing with a UI component like a nav bar or something like that, and I see that well the navbar has all of these entities or the user has all of these dependencies all right where does that live does it make sense and then i start moving things uh, if i can of course if you know assuming that there's no like no set uh, set standard for how to do everything and all of a sudden you very quickly get to uh, more centralized code modules where you see like where basically everything that is a child or a has a connection to say the nav bar in the UI for uh, instead of having it like all across the place because I'm I'm not a big believer in the there are people who have conventions uh, styles like where I argue people who don't really understand MVC what they do is they create a module a module uh, mod uh, model view and a controller folder and they spread the knowledge of like their different entities across the entire code base instead of actually trying to c couple the the pieces that actually are f that fit together because as I said if you look at everything as a tree then you basically know that the only time you go outside of the tree is if there's some shared thing because most of your functionality could in theory when it comes to an entity such as a user or a nav or like a UI component it's just a set of like it's a top node and then nodes that like, cascade downwards all of those nodes can basically live in the same folder and what is powerful about that is that when you start thinking in that way you have basically created a module for a specific entity or a specific area of functionality within your system and when you start doing that you're starting to logic in my mind at least that's how it works for me I'm starting to segment the different areas and I create associations between different entity services and classes or whatever it might be right or UI components and I see that oh, the UI bar or the nav bar has like the these icons and this drop down and so forth and so forth and I used to you start to associate them into packages and that's actually how you create widgets for the UI or if you, cre you do a module for a backend service you can make that into a microservice now and it makes it easier than if everything is just a spiderweb where everything sort of just lives by itself because it's much harder for you to trace the flow of dependencies and things that are associated with each other because if you can start grouping pieces of uh, source code or files into common associations it's easy for you to start to understand how those association works uh, or how those connections work because if I know that well the user is one of the most important entities and it has this con this connection to all this stuff uh, I can bucket that together if that makes sense and that basically means that it's not always but it's almost always the case that one entry point or one ne like network request basically only touches if it's a restful api for example it just touches a product and that means that i can i have a, almost always a one to one or one to a few um, uh, mapping between whatever network request i make and whatever module i uh, domain model that i have grouped everything into that's usually how I do it because if you just try to read everything and just go wild and like try to figure out everything at the same time you're going to start confusing yourself but if you can segment it into modules like this it becomes much easier for you to understand each module and its fun feature its uh, um, its functionality and place within the overall system divide and conquer basically so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, reading source code for a large project is fast and like understanding is as I said it's basically down to divide and conquer you're never going to understand a large system by just reading absolutely everything so what I do is as I said usually the first thing you want to identify is like what entities are you dealing with what com UI component if it's a, a web page like what are the main components on the page because you usually have what I call page level components where it's like a nav bar a sidebar a content area a footer like these bigger bigger blocks of functionality right you go to the code you try to identify them and you start trying to put them into their to their respective modules because usually when you have a UI component for example that's very easy everything that is in within that component should live in the same folder because now all of a sudden everything is just associated it doesn't have to live outside of that thing that's the thing that usually confuses people if the code is just spread across the whole project and you have to so trace where everything is it's better to create a, so it's, as I like to say modules with centralized uh, functionality that make it helps a lot when it comes to dividing 
functionality and thinking about smaller pieces of the system because if it becomes too spider webby it's hard to reason about it because you're forcing people to think about the whole system at the same time that's very difficult they need to understand one thing first and then they can make associations and sort of see how the connections work if you can group it correctly same thing on the server side a network request is usually just the enter point into a tree structure and that's what the UI does as well. It's just a tree structure of different UI elements, right? And if you can associate uh, the uh, a endpoint network call to an entity and its associated logic into just one bo folder, then you can very quickly just go and sort of understand how does the flow of logic work for this specific entity? And then after a little while, you're going to find that, oh yeah, there are a few other services here. and by doing this divide and conquer strategy, you will comprehend the system much, much faster. But don't, as I said, don't try to understand the whole system at the same time. You're never going to do that. It's usually too much information for a person to take in at any given time. So try to, as I said, segment things into different modules, understand each module and how they associate to each other. It's basically the same thing as understanding the uh, entity the domain uh, uh, the entities within your domain and their associations uh, when you do like m draw things on a map or something like that but at the code level have a great day